quite a few people wrote me about controlled round feet rifles and they were asking about the difference between pre-64 model 70 and the Mauser 98 and then there were a whole bunch of associated questions so I thought the best way to explain it is to actually show the barrels of the rifles that are involved in those questions and I guess probably the best place to start is controlled round feed so this is a Mauser 98 bolt and as you can see um, it holds the cartridge on its own and it's uh, you know if I shook it around it would fall out uh, what you're seeing is a, a six millimeter Remington cartridge um, the reason that's in there is I actually have a barrel from a Mauser that's 7 by 57 and the 6mm Remington is based on the 7 by 57 I just didn't have happen to have 7 by 57 ammunition around um, that'll all make sense to you in a minute if it hasn't made sense already so the cartridge case is the same on the 6mm and on the 7 by 57 it's just that the neck is different <laughs> anyway that's a bit of a tangent um, so you can see it's completely controlled and then if we put a cartridge into the bolt face of say this is our um, I think it's an 80 uh, we would find that the the bolt could not hold the cartridge so this would be a typical push feed much like a Remington 700 or any of the modern rifles there are very few controlled round feed the uh, reintroduced pre-64 or post-64, pre-64, the classic Model 70. That's a controlled round feed. Now having said all that, I went into the vault and I took out a pre-64 and this one's in 243, exactly improved. And I tried to, you can see the bolt is very similar to a Mauser, but when I tried to get this bolt to hold the cartridge, uh, the same as this Mauser 98, it it didn't work. This is a controlled round feed, but it has to, in this particular rifle, it has to lift the cartridge from the follower in the magazine, and then the cartridge is guided into the chamber. So this is a pretty technical video, but lots of you will follow what I'm saying, and I'm sure lots of you won't. But the point is, the Mauser gives completely complete control of the cartridge and some people like that especially dangerous game hunters then we move to the next part of the equation in in my right hand is a pre-64 model 70 barrel I think I've shown this to you before somebody bought a brand new barrel way back when it was still in the Winchester box um, and and I was lucky enough to find it and it was just stored it was never installed so you can see the threading on the pre-64 barrel is quite different from the Mauser this is the 7x57 barrel that I was telling you about and you can the threading is um, referenced in TPI threads per inch and you can see that there's a difference between those and just for interest sake uh, here's a barrel from the newer Model 70 and you can see the big cut this is for the claw extractor that the Model 70 uses and we'll get rid of this barrel and go back to the Mauser and you can see that the Mauser doesn't have that extractor cut which is a theoretical pathway for gas to escape and the Model 70 also uses what's called a coned breech the idea or one of the ideas I was told by people who know more than I do was that feeding is much better when there's a cone breach because the bullet can skip off the cone and find its way into the chamber of course that means since you're going deeper into the shank of the barrel you have to make the extractor cut there are other reasons for these things but I'm simplifying for your understanding and now we're going to take away the Mauser barrel and substitute a brand new Springfield barrel. This one was also brand new 
Um, it's got the flaming bomb and I think it's made in 1941 or 42. Whenever I see those kinds of barrels, I buy them. They're beautifully made. And you can see that the Springfield has a different type of threading. And I think that's called Acme threading, but I'm, don't quote me. And I'm sure there are, there are experts out there watching right now that know all the details of why it is the way it is. But that's the Springfield shank, so you can see it's quite different from the Model 70. In any event, um, I'll show you a couple more. This is off of Malachar Schernauer. I'm using the pre-64 Model 70 kind of as a benchmark so you can see how different thing, the, the different barrels are. And then uh, moving to more modern rifles, take a look at the threading. The TPI is very high. This is a, an A-bolt 243WSSM. And you'll notice no extractor cut because the push feeds don't have the claw extractor. This one is off of a Tika. I wanted to have a Remington so that you could have a look at the highly advertised three rings of steel. But this is a Tika 65 in 338 Win Mag. It's a virtually new barrel. Somebody rebarreled to 300 Win Mag. And uh, so I got this barrel. And this is quite strong. There are no cuts. You got a lot of threads there and they're small threads. Um, I'll just pop the Mauser back on sort of as another reference point. You can see that Mauser opted for fairly coarse threads. And normally when I see the Mauser I think of that as kind of the probably most tested way to go. And so they, he must have used the coarse threading for a reason. So quite excellent and no coned breach. And actually there were a lot of notes over the past year especially asking me about the relative strength of the Pre-64 and the Mauser. Now, I think it's safe to say the Pre-64 has been tested in every way, but people like to talk about things theoretically, so you can see that they're, with the Mauser, the cartridge is going to be quite flush with the chamber, and the Pre-64, in a sense, is unsupported. This barrel is in 270, and that's a 270 cartridge in there. And I put this on the table just so that people can see the similarity in these designs. This is the Springfield 03. Uh, you, you can tell it right away because it has the extra locking lug on the side. The Mauser safety lug is back here. And the Winchester has the two locking lugs up front. And then the bolt handle. Quite interesting, at least to people who like guns. And then for fun, um, well, I pulled, I took this one out. You can compare that. This is the Browning bolt rifle. So quite a lot of threading, a long barrel shank, and again, no extractor cut. So the manufacturers, starting with the maker of the Remington 700, um, decided to go for, like, no way for gas to get out of there except for um, the gas management so-called gas management system um, and and the Mauser is also gas tight and the uh, well they, they all are on firing but if something goes wrong you have to have pathways for gas to escape and that's probably subject of another video if I'm not making sense it's because I don't want to go into it um, right now and this is off a of 6.5 by 55 these came in not that long ago a couple of years brand new from Sweden uh, for the 6.5 by 55 Swedish Mauser and this white coating is some kind of dried lithium grease, but they're beautifully made barrels and once in a while I get in my head I have to get a custom rifle built or something so when I see a barrel um, I just buy it and then um, to give you an idea of how extreme things can get this is off an 1886 Winchester lightweight and people often are worried about chamber thickness. Now this is a 4570 so it's not a very high pressure cartridge but some people load it quite heavily and you can see how thin the steel is just the nature of the action and um, we've got some extractor cut here and, and um, not much threading 
and thin steel. I, what does that mean? Not much. Everything works on those rifles. And then this is off of a Model 94 Trapper. Again, uh, an entirely different level of comfort with the steel at the chamber. And the, these rifles all work. And the 3030 is a higher pressure than a 4570, but it's also not a, a 240 Weatherby. So I think that um, probably gives you an idea and resolves this question that seems to be out there about whether the, the Winchester Pre-64 has a different system than the Mauser. It's quite different. Uh, we'll put all three together and you can see that the Pre-64 uh, was probably a combination. In fact, the, the, the writer is right about it. It's a combination of Mauser and Springfield. But I would have to say that everybody would have been probably best off just sticking with the Mauser. I don't see um, an advantage with controlled round feet. The cartridge goes directly into the chamber, so you don't need to make this funnel arrangement. The funnel arrangement helps when your bullet, the nose of the bullet is wobbling around. So then you kind of direct it in, because that's the shape of the chamber. But that leaves your cartridge um, unsupported, and you can, well, you can see it, that's fully chambered. So I, I hope that's useful for you. I, I just have this on the table. Sometimes people write me, what else did you have on the table? This started out as my, what I call my Prada gun, because it had this great big stiletto thing before I took that off. It's an original Mauser with the banner on the receiver ring. Um, I'll probably build something out of that one day. And then um, just another barrel. What is this? Oh, this is the Browning BBR. 25 out 6. So you've seen a whole collection of barrels. You've seen the different way the manufacturers handle um, issues like chambering and feeding. And probably my conclusion is the original and best was the 98, but you've heard that. I'm a broken record on that subject. And I think that this is uh, self-evident that that's the, probably the best system. Uh, disadvantage, some of you wrote me you can't feed a Mauser 98. You can't chamber around, like put, put, your, put around in the chamber and then close the bolt. That's true. You do have to feed off the follower, but I, I don't know, is that a big deal? <laughs> Not to me. But um, Pre-64 Model 70, also excellent. Uh, proven itself many times over. And then this just came the other day. I'll probably make a video, but I don't know if I'll have time today um, from Germany, uh, or rather from Switzerland. Um, I'm, I'm not sure of the pronunciation, but I'll do my best and I'm sure you'll correct me. It's a Grunig and Elmiger um, single shot. Just a beautifully made action with a really cool feature. It has a rail on the side of the action. I'll have to research why. Um, obviously it has scope mounts on the top, but it has these as well. Presumably this was used with those fancy aperture sights that they like to use. And the trigger is excellent. Anyway, we'll go into it another time. And this would be a typical push feed. So there you have it. I hope that resolves any questions that anybody had about the shape of the Pre-64 Model 70 shank. It is definitely coned. So is the Springfield. And that is definitely um, weaker than the Mauser. And if I didn't say it, I think this came off a of Brazilian. Mauser 7 by 57 So there we have it. That's a lot to cover. Uh, keep sending me your questions and comments. Sorry again if this was a little confusing, but it's kind of a lot to keep track of on one table. Uh, I might have missed some technical details, but you can add them or, you know, write me and then people can read what you write. And um, please subscribe and support me on Patreon. And until next time, take care. Thank you for watching.